So you've probably heard that omega-3s are good for your brain, but did you know that the type of omega-3 matters just as much as the amount? Well, if you're taking a supplement or eating flax seeds thinking that you've got it covered, this video might surprise you. And in this video, we're gonna break down the difference between EPA and DHA, why some people can't convert those plant-based omega-3s well, how to choose the right source of omega-3s for your brain and your body, and why your APOE or FODs genes may actually be the key to optimizing your mood and mental clarity. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Giselle Rosa, a board certified psychiatric nurse practitioner here to help you optimize mental health through genetics and integrative and functional medicine using a skills before pills approach. So let's get into these omega-3s. What are omega-3s and why do they matter? Well, omega-3s are essential fatty acids, which means that your body can't make them on its own. You've got to get them through food or supplements. And there are three main types of omega-3s. First, ALA, or alpha-linoleic acid, found in plants like flax, chia, and walnuts. Then you have your EPA, or eicopancitoic acid, found in fatty fish and fish oil. And then you have DHA, or dexahexaconic acid, found in fatty fish and is critical for brain structure. And it's important to note that your brain is nearly 60% fat, and DHA is the most abundant omega-3 in the brain. While EPA, on the other hand, is more anti-inflammatory and mood stabilizing. And so now let's talk about those omega-3s and mental health. Well, EPA has been shown to improve symptoms of depression, especially in higher EPA to DHA ratios. While DHA supports cognitive function, memory, and brain development, it's a key structural component of the brain cell membranes. And low omega-3 levels have been associated with increased anxiety and depression, slower processing speed and memory decline, and greater inflammation, which is a major driver of mental health symptoms. And unfortunately, most Americans, and even more so your vegans and vegetarians, fall short on EPA and DHA. And so now we'll get into the genetics and who may need more omega-3s. Well, first up is the FODS1 and FODS2 gene. The FODS1 and FODS2 genes code for enzymes called Delta-5 and Delta-6 desaturase. And these enzymes are responsible for converting ALA, the plant-based omega-3 found in flax seeds, chia seeds, and walnuts, into the long chain omega-3s your brain actually uses, EPA and DHA. But here's the problem. The conversion from ALA to EPA is already low for most people, estimated at five to 10% and even lower for DHA. So if you carry certain SNPs or variants in FODs1 or FODs2, your body becomes even less efficient at making this conversion. So for example, FODs1 variants with the TT or GT genotypes often have reduced ability to produce EPA and DHA from ALA. FODs2 variants have been linked to altered desaturase activity and lower DHA levels altogether, especially in those following a plant-based diet. So, even if you're loading up on those flax seeds and chia, your body might still be starved of usable omega-3s if these genes aren't pulling their weight. And this matters a lot when we're talking about mental health because your brain relies on EPA and DHA, not ALA, for the neurotransmitter fluidity, anti-inflammatory balance, membrane integrity, and signal transmission. And so what's the solution? Well, if you carry these gene variants or you're unsure, choosing a direct source of DHA and EPA like fish oil or algae oil is the most reliable way to meet your needs. Now, the next gene we're gonna talk about is APOE. And we talked about APOE in a separate video. If you missed that, I advise you check it out. For this video, we're just gonna focus on the highlights of the APOE4 gene. So if you carry one or two copies of the APOE4 gene, you actually may have higher brain inflammation, a greater risk for Alzheimer's, and altered lipid metabolism, meaning your brain may need higher DHA levels to stay resilient. 
So, APOE4 carriers may also respond poorly to high saturated fat, so fish oil is preferable over high fat ketogenic diets, which we talked about in the APOE video. Next up, we have APOE2, and a risk variant here is TT. Now the APOE2 plays a role in lipid metabolism, particularly in regulating fat transport and HDL function and HDL is that good cholesterol. And now the impact of this TT variant increases the sensitivity to saturated fat, which means you have a greater risk of obesity and metabolic dysregulation when consuming a high saturated fat diet. So the omega-3 relevance here is that omega-3s may actually help to counteract inflammatory and high lipid related effects of the TT genotype. So these individuals actually benefit from more low saturated fat, but high omega-3 diets. And so the strategy here would be to emphasize fish oil or algae oil over a high fat ketogenic approach and also avoid combining omega-3s with saturated oils like coconut oil. Now, the last gene we'll cover here is the ELOV L2 gene. And the genotype here is the GG, which reduces this function. Now, the ELOV L2 is the elongation of very long chain fatty acids too. And it helps to elongate omega-3s and omega-6 fatty acids, especially converting EPA into DHA. And the GG variant has an impact in an impaired ability to produce adequate DHA from EPA. So this may lead to lower DHA levels, even if EPA is sufficient. And so the mental health relevance here is obviously that DHA, as we mentioned earlier, is essential for brain structure, memory, and cognition. So those GG carriers may be more vulnerable to cognitive decline or slow neuronal repair. So the strategy here is to prioritize direct DHA supplementation, whether through fish oil or algae oil with at least 250 to 500 milligrams of DHA daily. It would also be important to track your omega-3 index and consider adding DHA if memory or mood symptoms persist despite the use of EPA. And if you have any of these variants, it would be important to track your omega-3 index just to make sure you're getting enough omega-3s. And so what are those signs that you may be low in omega-3s? Well, you may have low mood, brain fog or irritability, dry skin, brittle nails or dry eyes, memory issues or even ADHD symptoms, joint stiffness and inflammation. It's also important to note that kids and teens with low DHA have been linked to developmental delays and behavioral concerns. So supplementing with omega-3s may actually be helpful for these kids. And so now let's talk about food sources of omega-3s. Well, the best animal-based sources that contain EPA and DHA is going to be salmon, sardines, mackerel, anchovies or herring, pastured eggs, and grass-fed beef, of course, in modest amounts. And then your plant-based sources, your ALA, flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, walnuts, and even soybeans. But again, ALA has to be converted into EPA and DHA. And for many people, that conversion is limited by genetics. So the vegetarian workaround would be algae oil. Algae naturally produces DHA and EPA, making it an ideal source for those avoiding animal products. Algae oil is also bioavailable. It bypasses the FODs conversion bottleneck and is also sustainable and free from mercury or PCBs. And PCBs are chemicals known as polychlorinated biphenols. And these are man-made chemicals that are often found in poor quality fish oils and are associated with cancer and birth defects. So you definitely wanna avoid those PCBs. And so now let's talk about supplement options. Well, for fish oil, you'll have fatty acid types, triglyceride or reesteride forms. And you wanna make sure you got a high quality, molecularly distilled supplement and look for EPA to DHA ratios of two to one if you're looking for mood support. And a typical dose would be one gram to three grams total omega-3s for the day. With algae oil, of course you want DHA and EPA. This is best for vegetarians or those with FODS1 or FODS2 variants. 
So choose one with at least 250 to 500 milligrams combined EPA DHA. And remember, if you have APOE4, avoid high saturated fat delivery systems like krill oil or coconut oil. So now let's move on to talking about omega-3 dosage, safety, and interactions. Well, the recommended dose for the general population, according to the FDA, they advise that adults can safely consume up to three grams per day of combined EPA and DHA from all sources with no more than two grams per day from dietary supplements. Though therapeutic use actually requires or uses higher doses up to six grams per day may be prescribed for specific conditions like depression. However, exceeding the upper limit of five grams per day may actually increase the risk of adverse effects and should only be done under medical supervision. So what are those side effects or potential side effects of omega-3s? Well, most commonly you'll have gastrointestinal side effects such as nausea, diarrhea, and a fishy aftertaste or burps. And these can often be minimized by taking omega-3s with meals or using enterocodic capsules. There's also a bleeding risk that may be associated with high doses of omega-3s because high doses of omega-3s may have an antiplatelet effect, potentially increasing bleeding risk, especially in those on anticoagulant therapy. There's also a rare risk of atrial fibrillation where some studies suggest a potential increase in the risk of AFib with high dose omega-3 supplementation, particularly in those with existing cardiovascular conditions. So that's why it's important to always consult with your your healthcare provider before starting any supplement, including omega-3s. Now, what about those interactions with medications? Well, a common potential interaction is warfarin or coumadin because omega-3 supplements can enhance the effects of anticoagulants like warfarin and increase the risk of bleeding. So again, it's crucial for those on such medications to consult with their healthcare provider before starting any omega-3 supplements. Other potential medication interactions could be blood pressure medications because omega-3s can potentially enhance blood pressure medication effects. They can also interact with contraceptives and weight loss medications like Orlistat, where the contraceptive medications or Orlistat can actually decrease the absorption or affect the absorption of omega-3s. And so let's talk about best practices for supplementing. Well, first you wanna make sure you have a quality source of omega-3s. So choose supplements that are third-party tested for purity and potency to ensure that they are free from contaminants like mercury and those PCBs. Also check the expiration and check for a rancid smell to ensure freshness because rancid capsules are less effective and it can actually be harmful. You also want to make sure you're getting a good form. Omega-3s are available in various forms including free fatty acid, triglyceride, phospholipid, and ethyl ester forms. But the free fatty acid and triglyceride forms are generally better absorbed. And so avoid the ethyl ester forms because they're less bile available. Also note that taking omega-3 supplements with meals can actually enhance absorption and reduce those gastrointestinal side effects. And so here are my final thoughts on omega-3s. If you've been struggling with mood or memory or brain fog, and you're not getting enough EPA and DHA, you're not alone. Most people are either under consuming omega-3s or taking the wrong kind for their body. And your genetics like FODs1 or APOE might mean you need more or a different source entirely. So if you want a personalized approach to optimize your mental health using nutrition and genetic insights like these, visit my website to learn more. The link will be in the description. And if you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share it with someone who actually needs a brain boost. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.